I think January, it was started January that our job, we, we stopped the, our job and then we don't have any, uh, we don't have exact amount of uh, uh, income, but God is really faithful. He has always uh, provide. And actually, I think this year we eat a lot yeah. <laughs> compared to other years. So we praise and thank the Lord for that. And also, we didn't experience uh, sickness in our uh, family. So I, you know, uh, we, I give the praise and glory to God. Okay, so for our uh, uh, message this afternoon, I want you to in, invite to open your Bible in the book of Psalm. Psalm 1. Let's read this. Uh, whole Psalm, Psalm 1, 1 to 6. And I know most of you, or maybe all of us, memorize this passage in this uh, book. Okay, let's all stand up. Let's read Psalm 1, 1 to 6. Okay, let's read this all together. Ready? Begin. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's uh, come to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, once again we are so thankful for this time that you've given to us to study your word. I pray, Father, that you will guide us. Let the Holy Spirit teach each every one of us. Give us a heart that can understand the truth from thy word and I pray that you will uh, encourage and uh, uh, teach us and uh, remind us about the truth that we need to to be in your will and I pray Father that you will bless this uh, message I pray that all uh, what we do today will give glory to your name thank you so much Lord for everything I'm asking Lord for forgiveness of our sins cleanse our hearts and our minds almighty God we praise you and glorify your name. All these things I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the title of our message this morning, we can see in the last verse of this psalm, it says here, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. It says uh, in this psalm, the way of the righteous and the way of the ungodly are contrasted. That's what we're going to look here. And we, I know all of us here knows what is the way of the righteous and the way of the ungodly. That's what I uh, mentioned here in the book of Psalm 1. Now, let's go to uh, number one, the, the way of the righteous. Number one, the way of the righteous. What the righteous man must do. Now, before that, in order to become righteous, we know that all of us are sinners and uh, all of us are doomed to hell and we cannot do anything uh, to save ourselves. Only by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ through faith, we can be saved. And in that case, we can become righteous. If you don't have any personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not become righteous because the Lord Jesus Christ can make us righteous. So, here, we can see here, what is the way of the righteous? The way of the righteous, number one, first, we must depart from sin. Departing from sin. You know, it's really difficult to, to do that because in our flesh, we are sinful. We are still in our uh, human nature that we, we, uh, we can uh, do sin. But here in Psalm 1, 1, it says here, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth 
in the seat of scornful. God is stating here that we need to, not, we do not need to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. In, and also in 2 Timothy 2.19, 2 Timothy 2.19 says here, 2 Timothy 2.19, okay, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If we know that we are his son, if we know that we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to depart from iniquity. And also in 1 John 3, 4 to 5, 1 John 3, 4 to 5, says, Whosoever committed his sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. So these verses pertaining that we need to depart from sin, we need to avoid sin, because sin is keep on uh, is in our uh, in our life. But if we will not uh, depart from it, we can always use that. And here under number one, we need to depart from sin. A, we must how to depart from sin. Letter A, we must not listen to the counsel of the ungodly. We don't need to listen to their counsel. This means cutting off the means of communication of the world to your heart. We need to cut them off like the movies and uh, ungodly TV uh, uh, what do you call that? Program, wrong music and actually internet website. It is really easy for the devil to, to penetrate our mind and our hearts because of these things. But if we keep on listening to them I don't know if you have uh, you are uh, what do you call that happy to listen to these things instead of listening to the preaching instead of listening uh, godly music if that's what you are uh, uh, feeling right now the Bible says we need to depart from sin we don't need to listen to the counsel of the ungodly because it will really uh, uh, give us uh, idea that it's it's okay to listen to us like uh actually if you are even in other preaching that's why when we are listening to the preaching of other uh denomination we need to be very careful our our basis is the bible if what they are saying is according to the word of god let's listen to them but if what they are saying is according to their uh opinion or their experience better not to listen to them so it's a, the Bible is our final authority. And, and in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 says, That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. We need to put off. We need to remove it from our place because uh, it's there. The Bible uh, uh, is clear that in our body we we still commit sin because we are we we have two nature although we have a new nature but our old nature is still there if you will not uh, feed your new nature your old nature will come out and it will you will obey that that's why the bible is clear saying that we need to yield to the holy spirit we need to submit to the holy spirit in order to to avoid sin so we don't need to listen to the counsel of the ungodly. And also, in Psalm 101, verse 3, say, it says here, David says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I hope that this is our uh, goal in our life, that we don't need to set wicked thing before our eyes. And also what we hear. Because uh, even... Uh, like nowadays just open your phone this, your tv your uh, any gadget lots of uh, worldly things you can see if we are not be careful sometimes uh, you think it's just okay but the devil is uh, uh, subtle we need to be very careful 
So that's what we need to do. We need to depart from sin. In order to depart from sin, we must not listen to the counsel of the ungodly. And not only that, let's be we must leave the way of sinners. Leave yung layuan. We must leave the way of sinners. This means you will probably lose friends. And sometimes even your family may reject you. But Jesus promised to give you a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. You know, if you will avoid these people, these sinners, probably you will lose friends. Because what, you, what, what they are doing before I remember when I got saved, I stopped living the way my friends live. Because uh, during the time we go to the party, we enjoy, and then after that, after when I go home, and I feel uh, uh, longkot, longkot. I feel sad about what I did. And I said, this is not happiness. Uh, this is not joy. First, you enjoy, but when I realized that I need the Lord Jesus Christ, and I, need, I, I separated from them, I leave the way what they do. So, that does not mean I broke off all the contact with sinners. I would not participate in their way of life. It doesn't mean that you will unfriend them. It doesn't mean that you don't need to mind them. I don't care about you. But because the Bible is saying that we need to go to, the, go, go to tell them that they are sinners. That is our uh, business to them. To tell that they need the Lord Jesus Christ. To tell that God loves them to tell that they, there is a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we don't need to participate in their way of life. Sad to say, many of us are still in, uh, in that the thing. We, we sometimes they said, uh, in order for them to come to, to the church, we need to join what they are doing. You know, that's not a uh, right principle. Many churches in the Philippines, they do lots of things in order to attract other uh, unbelie uh, unbeliever to to go to the church but that's not uh it will just la it will not last for a long time or a lifetime only the word of god if our main attraction is the word of god for sure when they believe and when they realize and then we when they understand the word of god for sure they will not go out easily like what we experienced i know all of us are more uh i don't know what you experienced why why did you uh, attend the church you know i uh, i attended the church and i realized that i'm a sinner because of the bible not of any program because we have some uh, gift giving that we need to attend they, they, they there's a free free thing a free lunch or free anything but because of the word of god because of attending bible study every uh, during weekdays i realized that i need the lord jesus christ so when when people was attracted by the 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 word of god you know it's hard for them to to turn their back from from god like what we are experiencing right now so we must leave the way of sinner what we are what they are doing we don't need to 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 go with them as believers we cannot participate in any kind of sin, no matter how small we think it is, or else we will break our fellowship with God. Because we know God hates sin, and if we participate with those simple acts, we will we'll break our fellowship with God. Because God doesn't want to have fellowship in, uh, with sin, and we know that. We must not fall into the trap of putting our stamp of approval on sinners, so as not to offend them or lose them as friends. Sometimes that's what we are doing. In order for them not to offend, we need to join them. I remember what pastor says. Uh, he always says this, that there's a, a Christian. He wants to share with uh, the dancer in the club. That's why he go there in order to share the gospel. No, you don't need to do that. You need to, to, to avoid... But they are doing because maybe they are, they will think, oh, it's I think it's okay to to go to the disco house or karaoke club because uh, because you are also there. We don't need their approval of sinners. We might lose friends, but 
it's okay. As, at least we tell them that the, they need God in their life. We must tell them the truth. They are sinners in need of a Savior. That is the only thing that will save them. No matter what, we must always be honest with sinners, no matter what the consequences are. We need to tell them. Sometimes we are sh sugarcoating the truth. That's why when they, uh, when they understand, they said, oh, I, that's not what I understand. That's why they are, they are many people think that they are Christian because of the, of, uh, we know Satan is uh, subtle. That they will, Satan also using the word of God in order to deceive people. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he used the word of God in order to, to, to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need to be very careful that we need to tell the truth, whatever it takes, even though they get mad at us. But if they will realize and if they will understand the word of God, for sure they will thank us. And then they, they will say, thank you for telling me that I'm a sinner. Because nowadays, people are saying, don't tell them that they are sinners. Just tell them God loves you. Yeah, the Lord, God loves us, but we are sinners. We are sinners that we need a Savior. We cannot do anything for ourselves. So that's what we need to do in order to depart from sin. We need to not, uh, we must not listen to the counsel of the ungodly. We must leave the way of sinners. And then let her see, we not linger at the seat of the scornful. This means we must hate the awful condition of those that do not know Christ. We no longer sit where they sit. It means we don't need to have fellowship with them. What they are doing, it doesn't mean that you will not uh, communicate with them. It means only, uh, like when you say fellowship, it means you are have an intimate relationship with these people. We have been raised with Christ. Now we must seek to live that resurrected life and point them to Christ. They must see the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. If we are, um, they call that, compromising with them on what they are doing in order for them to, to believe, no, for sure, it will not, uh, we will not become successful in sharing the, the word of God. But instead, we need to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it must be seen in our life. Now, if you don't want to get, uh, uh, if you don't want to get wet, don't get close to the water. So that's what, uh, and, and if you don't want to fall into Satan's trap, don't get close to sin. Sometimes we are saying that, oh, I'm strong enough. I can handle this. I cannot, uh, I also remember the illustration of pastor. He said, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, will be, I will not be tempted in uh, pornographic movies. That's why he watched pornographic and it doesn't matter with me. No, don't play with Satan. Don't play with the devil. Don't play with sin. We don't know. Maybe we are thinking that we are so the Bible says, take heed. No, no, we take heed that we stand it. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Lest ye fall. Okay? So something like that. And then, now, don't get close to sin. Now, we have seen the negative side of the presence of God and we must that we must depart from sin. Now let's see the positive side. Uh, number two in our uh, the way of the righteous, second verse, we must delight in God. First, we must depart from sin and then next in order to to uh, what is the way of the righteous? Number two, we must delight in God. In verse number two it says here, but his delight it pertains to the righteous person. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. Letter A, God is our passion. That must be our, our uh, passion. God is our passion. What we, delight is, uh, what we delight in is our passion. There are those who more than anything love sports or love music or something else. It doesn't matter what it is, but our first love should be the Lord. Our life should revolve around Him. Don't be, uh, don't be distracted with these things. You know, we are thinking that sometimes we are, uh, we are thinking that we are poor. We are lacking of these things. And then we love, 
We love uh, watching other things than reading the Word of God. We are we want to to watch something than uh, listening to the preaching of the Word of God. We must uh, ask ourselves: Am I doing? Am I walking the way of the righteous? The way of the righteous says we must delight in God. That that's why we, it says here that God is our passion paul said in philippians 3 10 philippians 3 10 that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death this is what apostles says that i want to know the lord jesus christ remember the song lord i want to know you more you know we cannot exhaust uh, the bible Although we keep on reading this in the all our life, we can learn many things. Actually, when I uh, met, there are some messages here that I preached before, but when I study it again, I saw another thing. So you cannot exhaust the word of God. We need to know the Lord Jesus Christ more. And in Matthew six twenty one, it says here, uh, "For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also." If God is not our passion, or we don't, uh, our our God is not our first love. Our love is, is be, uh, will be in the world. The Bible says, "For where your treasure is, there will your heart be, also." That's what uh, we need to do. We need to delight in God. And then next, God is our passion. Letter B: God is our point of focus. God is our point of focus. The world knows this principle. God, uh, the world knows this. That is why the television, the radio, the newspaper, the internet are so interesting. Because they know that uh, we are interested with these things. The world wants us to concentrate on it. That's why, uh, like what I've said, our enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we need, uh, the world is just uh, giving these things, uh, showing these things in order to, to, to remove our focus on God. And sometimes we are uh, unaware that we are not looking to Jesus Christ anymore. We are just looking on these things. That's why we need to be reminded every time. But the Bible says right here that we should meditate on the law of the Lord day and night. So we need to do this. We need to study the Word of God day and night. Old, uh, even though our maybe we are saying, oh, I'm so tired of preparing uh, our lesson, making lesson plan, preparing things. Like what? Right now, for me, it's really difficult to prepare a lesson for online class compared to the normal class. That's why uh, sometimes I, uh, we said, oh, it's okay. I'm tired. God will understand. No. I, it doesn't mean that God, say that God didn't understand what we are doing, but that's not what we need to do. We need to meditate the Word of God day and night. So we don't need to exchange that with. Uh, we don't need to give an excuse, or say that we cannot do this because I'm preparing. You know, we can spend time preparing our lesson. We can spend time making PowerPoint, make it good in order to impress our. Uh, uh, head teacher, the owner, the parents. But when it comes to God, it says, ah, it's okay, God will understand me. That's not a good reasoning. We need to, to, to meditate the, law, the, the, the word of God day and night. You know, uh, the world is keep on attracting us. Just go down to the road and you will see lots of billboard. You see, you can see many billboard about... Uh, Showing the world we need to, to, you know, you need to have this, you need this. It is a uh, distraction to us. We must put the word of God constantly before us. We must concentrate on it. We need to concentrate and point our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, let us see, not only, uh, this, not only God is our passion, God is uh, our point of focus, but it, God is our provider. The Bible says, he, We will be like a tree planted by the rivers 
of water. Have you seen a tree that plants it on the rivers of water? It is a uh, healthy and gives fruit. If we are living in God's presence, He become He becomes our nourishment, the source of our power because God is the ultimate source of our power. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He is the vine and we are the branches. If we are not abiding on the Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot bear fruit. He is our provider. He will see us true no matter what circumstances. God knows what, uh, what, what we are experiencing right now. We prove that in this, in this year that he knows maybe sometimes we are thinking why god allow these things to happen to us maybe god doesn't care no god knows he will see us true no matter what the circumstances you know why in philippians 2 13 it says here for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure now we can do anything if God's presence is with us. Like uh, I remember the illustration, the the martyr named Thomas Hawk put up his hands as a signal that a martyr's death was endurable. Even the martyr's death is that it's endurable when you die with the Lord. So God will give you grace, whatever your situation. Is he is our provider because uh, maybe we are thinking that God doesn't provide because we we want more on what we are receiving that is not a uh, not a good character of a Christian because the Bible says uh, godliness with contentment is great gain Amen. we need to be content of what we have because God will always provide and then number three the way of the righteous last uh we must do god's will we need to do the will of god in verse 3 and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper to walk the way of the righteous we will depart from sin we need to delight in god and we will be doing what god wants us to do we need to do god's will in our life because if it is according to our will we will be uh distracted or we will it will point us to our worldly pleasure or lust in psalm 37 says delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart you see if we have desires in our heart we need to delight to the Lord but that you know maybe you're thinking but what if your desire is not good you know if you delight yourself in the Lord you will not have a bad desire in your life all your desire will be good for the Lord because you are in the Holy Spirit God will not dictate you what will uh, will uh, what, uh, what what things that will not uh, benefit or we uh, the, the things that are bad it is always good when you are delight yourself in the lord so we must do god's will in order to do that uh, with that it says here letter a we are planted in god's will this is god's work you did not save yourself we are saved by grace we know that not works and since god planted planted us is his will we can never be removed from the presence of god because we have eternal life that's what uh, our doctrine says that well, once we are saved we are always saved we cannot lose our uh, salvation in john chapter 10 verse 27 to 29 the bible says here my sheep jesus christ said my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. If we are in the will of God, nobody can remove us. Nobody can uh, separate us from 
the love of God because that was his promise to his children and then not only we are in God's will but we are productive in God's will it says here that uh, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season we will become productive when we are in the will of God when you enter God's presence you do not leave empty handed we always produce in 2nd Corinthians 5 17 it says here 2nd Corinthians 5 17 therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new you know when God comes into our life we cannot be the same person we cannot we will be changed because that's what the Bible says if you really believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if you really repented of your sin and if you uh, put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ you, you are not the same person anymore you are new in Christ we cannot do it we must let God produce the fruit in our lives through prayer and Bible study you know we cannot uh, bear fruit by our own we need to trust the Lord Jesus said you need to abide in me if you are not abiding in me you cannot bear fruit that's why we need to abide and the Lord in, in God and we will become productive in God's will and then let us see we are prosperous in God's will if we are in the will of God we will become prosperous it says here his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper maybe you're thinking really whatsoever you do will prosper if you know if you are in the will of God you will not do bad things you will always do the will of God so that's why the Bible says whatsoever he do it it says according to the will of God shall prosper so that's what we can see here in the first three verses of Psalm 1 the way of the righteous now let's look at the way of the ungodly number two the long points lang tayo the way of the the righteous and then number two the way of the ungodly now what is the way of the ungodly in verse number four the ungodly are not so but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away it says here letter a the ungodly are not so everything true about the righteous man is stable as a tree continual life and nourishment fruitful alive and prosperous but it's not so regarding to the ungodly it may often seem like the ungodly have these things and sometimes it seems that they have them more than the righteous sometimes we are like what we study here in some also like Aesop said that he was so envy with the unrighteous because they have big houses no that's not the way but it says here but it is not so any of these things are fleeting in the life of the ungodly it can be said that they don't really have them at all so that's what the Bible says the ungodly are not so and then letter B they are like the shaft which the wind driveth away you know shaft is the the light shell around a kernel of, of grain which must be stripped away before the kernel or grain can be ground into flour chaff was light enough that it could be separated from the grain by throwing a scoop full into the wind and letting the wind drive away the chaff this is how unstable how lacking in substance the ungodly are maybe we are thinking that they are prosperous they are full of substance but they were compared to a chaff yung ipa di ba apa uh, pag sa probinsya pag nagtatahib ka ng palay lagay mo lang sa hangin magliliparan because they don't have any they are unstable they have no substance that's what the ungodly are and then next number two in verse number five the way of the ungodly dangerous uh, the dangerous place of the ungodly number two the dangerous future of the ungodly what is their future therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous so because it says here therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment because the ungodly have no weight 
they will be found lacking on the day of judgment as it said in king belshazzar in the book of daniel in daniel 5:27 ginawa pa nga tong pelikula ni fernando po daniel 5:27 tekel thou art way in the balances and art found one thing tinimbang ka ngunit kulang this is the ungodly they don't have weight they don't have, uh, in science weight can change you know that and mass doesn't change that's why they said it's weight it can change and then it says here in letter b nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous this is true both in the future because sinners will not share the same glorious future of the righteous and we know that that sinners they will be uh, uh, they will go to hell that's why we need to to, to do our part to share the gospel to them because uh, there is a punishment that will wait for them. It is also true in the present because sinners sense they do not belong in the congregation of the righteous if they insist on remaining sinners. If they will still insist on what they are doing, they cannot be in the part of the church. So that's why that's what will happen to them in the future. They don't have a good future compared to the righteous and for the summary in Psalm 1 6 is the the summary of this comparison of the way of the ungodly and the way of the sinners and says here for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish so the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous the righteous can have peace because a loving God in heaven knows their way and will protect and preserve them and the way of the ungodly shall perish the way of the ungodly leads to destruction they are on the broad path that may seem comfortable now and gives them lost uh, and gives them lots of company but in the end they shall perish the Bible Jesus Christ also says that in the in the Bible that broad is the way to destruction but narrow is the the way in in god so so we need to identify if we are what are we walking the way of the righteous maybe sometimes we are uh, unaware that we are not walking in the way of the righteous and we know the way of the the unrighteous or the way of the wicked and that that's why we need to tell them that they need to 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 remove or to don't go in that way god is offering another way for them to be saved the question for us which way are you on are we in the way of the righteous or the way of force you if we have a relationship with the lord jesus christ we are not in the way of the ungodly but the question to us today are we still walking in the way of the righteous or maybe we are Sometimes we, ano ba tawa? Iba ng landas. We change path. We change direction. We remove our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, the Lord Jesus Christ said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to focus our eyes on God. So I hope this uh, message remind us that uh, we need to stay in the will of God in order to walk the way of the righteous let's pray our father in heaven lord we thank you